What's up team, Michael here. So if you've been following me for a bit, you know that before I started CrossFit, I was a runner. And in fact, I was running for about four years before I even started CrossFit. And while I'm definitely not a running expert, during those years where I was really focused on running, I did learn quite a few running tips, specifically the three tips that I'm gonna share with you in this video. And I almost guarantee you that if you start doing these three tips in your CrossFit workout to have running in them, not only will you feel like you're getting a better workout, but you'll also not hate running near as much. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Michael, and on this channel, I share CrossFit related tips as well as other things that I'm learning while on my journey to compete in a CrossFit sanctional. So, if that interests you, consider joining the team by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Okay, so when I was shooting the B roll for this video, I was planning to get some epic drone shots of me running. <laughs> then this happened. <laughs> So while I wasn't able to get the epic drone shots in this video, there will be another running video coming out over the next few weeks. So you'll see them in that video. If you're not subscribed, subscribe for that video. So the first one we're gonna be talking about is how your foot strikes the ground. If you've never paid attention to how you're striking the ground when you're running, you're most likely striking the ground heel first. This isn't necessarily your fault because the way modern shoes are made nowadays, it makes it really easy to do. However, it is a big no-no. The reason striking heel first when running is so bad is because when you're running, all that pressure from the impact of you landing on your foot while running, all that is being funneled to your knees and into your hips, also into your lower back. Since that can cause running related injuries, you wanna make sure that you are striking the ground with your forefoot. That's basically like you're landing on your toes or striking the ground midfoot. That's basically just striking the ground with your whole foot landing at the same time. Personally, when my goal is to run really fast, say a 0.10 mile sprint in a CrossFit workout, I like to run and strike the ground with my forefoot. It allows you to run a little bit faster with less effort and it also helps to protect your knees and hips and lower back from injury because you're helping to absorb a lot of that impact from hitting the ground when you're running. However, if I'm gonna be pacing out a little bit of a longer run and I'm not gonna be running near as fast, I like to strike the ground midfoot. It just feels like personally for me that I can pace out the run a lot better. However, it might feel different for you just so test out each one and see which one feels better for you also when you're running whether in CrossFit or not you want to keep in mind two really important things first you want to make sure that when you're running your foot is landing directly underneath your hip this helps you to run a lot more efficiently and the second thing is if you're striking the ground with your midfoot you want to make sure that your toes are tilted up when you're running this helps you not to catch your toes on the ground and then roll your ankle okay so the next running tip is you want to make sure that when you're running you are breathing properly using something called diaphragmatic breathing this also this tip also doesn't just apply to running but to working out and just breathing in general especially for doing like heavy squats or heavy cleans I'm considering doing a video more in depth on diaphragmatic breathing in the future, so let me know in the comments if you wanna see that. But diaphragmatic breathing is just a big fancy term for saying that you are breathing through your diaphragm. And if you don't know, your diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle that lies right underneath your lungs and your heart, and it helps you breathe more efficiently. However, a lot of people when they breathe, they are not using the entire potential of their diaphragm. In fact, when you see a lot of people breathe and they inhale, you'll see that their chest will get bigger and their stomach will get smaller. But in fact, this is the opposite of what you wanna do. When you breathe and you're using your diaphragm correctly, your stomach should actually push out as you inhale and then pull back in as you exhale. I'll explain a little bit of the benefits of this type of breathing in just a little bit, but here is a quick test to to test whether or not you are using your diaphragm correctly. First, you wanna put one hand on your chest and then you wanna put one hand on your stomach. After that, you wanna take in a big breath. If you felt your stomach push out as you inhaled, then you are using your diaphragm correctly. However, if you felt your chest push out more than your stomach did, that means you are not using your diaphragm correctly. There are a ton of reasons as to why you would actually want to breathe through your diaphragm, but one of the biggest reasons is you can actually breathe more efficiently. And the way you're breathing more efficiently is you're bringing in oxygen with way less work. And we all know that when you're working out or running or doing any type of physical activity, you want to preserve as much energy as possible and funnel that into your workout. So if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to like it. I'll wait. 
like the like button's like right down there. Also be sure to comment and let the team know on what has been your biggest thing that's helped you personally in running. It might help somebody else. Okay, so the next tip that you wanna keep in mind when running is you wanna make sure that you are pacing yourself correctly. Now this tip can also be applied to all CrossFit workouts, not just running. However, I feel that running is a movement that is really easy to start off really hot and then blow up mid-workout. So I would suggest that when you're doing a CrossFit workout with running in it, make sure you are starting off at a way more conservative pace than you think is actually necessary. So for example, if you're doing a CrossFit workout that is like five rounds for time, let's say squats, push-ups, and a .10 mile run. You want that first 0.10 mile run to be the slowest run of your entire workout. However, you want the fifth 0.10 mile run in the fifth round, you want that run to be the fastest run of the entire workout. In the running community, there is actually a name for this and it's called negative splits. And that's basically where as you continue to run, you are getting faster and faster and faster instead of blowing up and getting slower. In fact, if you watch expert runners run a race, you'll see that the second half of the race is actually way, way faster than the first part of the race. I guarantee that once you start practicing your pacing a lot more, running won't feel near as bad. Okay, so if you made it this far in the video, first, congratulations. Really, not many people make it this far, but I have a question for you, and that is, if you're subscribed here, you most likely wanted to see videos from me, so drop in the comments some video ideas that you have. Do you want me making more videos on doing CrossFit at home, more running videos, product reviews, whatever it is, drop your answers in the comments. I'd love to see it, but until next time, train hard team, and I'll see you later.